Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot, bringing you another Madden 22 video. I didn't plan on putting out a video today. It's Friday. I find that Friday videos don't necessarily perform as well. Uh, but ultimately, I have no choice because EA just dropped some major mutt information uh, that I just, I'm giddy about. Some of this stuff is insane. I mean, every year, mutt kind of feels the same. And I know people listening probably think that way. But ultimately, this stuff here, uh, these are game changers. There's some really new stuff coming out to Mutt. Uh, I know a lot of people think that Madden every year is pretty much the same game, but there's so much new stuff coming out this year that this really makes me excited about this game. I know me personally, I played Madden for two weeks uh, during the beta. A lot of this stuff wasn't available. So I'm going to, you know, this is going to be new to me too. I'll describe the stuff uh, throughout this video that I actually personally experienced when I was playing the game. But as always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, keep you up to date on stuff like Mutt, I do a little bit of Mutt, a little bit of CFM, a little bit of Regs, a little bit of everything. If you want to see more Mutt stuff, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section as always. Uh, and also let me know what you you guys think about some of these features because like I said a lot of these just look like pure meta right out the gate and there's some seriously overpowered stuff that like I said I'm super excited about I can't wait to get my hands on a full copy uh, and really get to dive into this stuff so starting off there's really two main things I'm gonna start off with the one that I like the most uh, which is going to be the uh, the new home field advantages which you know everybody's probably aware that this year in regs there are home field advantages like I said I played the game for two weeks the home field advantages didn't really um, stand out a ton it was like they were they were they were definitely uh, they, they weren't like roadblocks they were more like speed bumps and you get used to them after a little while some of the ones that I'm gonna read to you that they're gonna be selling in mutt because that's obviously the idea is they want to sell you some really overpowered stuff um, is just it's it's insane I'm, I don't know which one's my personal favorite but I'm looking at like eight or nine here and I can see like four or five that look like they could be straight metas right out the gate so first off we have instinct now this one here to me sounds a little bit like Omaha for the defensive side it says the defense can see their opponents and it's, it breaks it down to home or away which it doesn't really just explain um, maybe you have to equip one for home games and one for away games I really don't know but it doesn't really say how you equip them nothing so it doesn't really give us that information just yet but ultimately it says the defense will be able to see the opponents intended pass target now that doesn't really sound helpful if it's like right before they throw the pass um, it, it, the computer wouldn't know what your opponent's thinking or who they're planning to throw to. Um, so what it sounds like to me is, like I said, it sounds like Omaha, but you're on the defensive side. And it only says the intended pass target. So it makes me think that you get to see the red route on the diagram, on the offensive diagram. Does that make sense? Uh, because ultimately, it's not going to show all four receivers. It's not going to show the play art. It says intended pass target. So typically, when the, the offensive diagram is pulled up, it always has one route in red. And that red route is basically the route that you know from the diagram is supposed to be the first read so my thought is that you will see the red route you will see the first read and that's it now that can be really helpful as a defender because if you have an opponent who's running a lot of plays from a similar um you know package if they're running a bunch of plays from split close or they're running a bunch of plays from gun bunch or gun tight you're not going to know which one of those plays it is unless you can see one single route. If you can see one main route, you're gonna know which play out of the five plays they like to run the most, they're running. So to me, that's one that's gonna be super helpful to help out as a defender if that's the way that it is. It doesn't break it down any further than that. That's how I take it. If you take it differently, let me know in the comment section. But if I'm playing against somebody who's running a lot of gun tight and I see the same route over and over again, I know they're running that same play over and over again. There might be a few adjustments, but it's still going to help out a ton to know ex more precisely what my opponent's going to be running. So that one there seems like it could be a meta one in my opinion. After that, we have hold the line. Now this is, once again, team has improved blocking. So it doesn't say whether it's passing or running. So it makes me think that it's both. So if you can just put on something that makes your entire offensive line play better the entire game, whether it's passing or running you're not getting sacked as much you're not getting pressured as much you're, you're blowing open holes in the run game that's a huge advantage that's something that I could see being you know super meta right out the gate too it doesn't say how much better the improved blocking is but if you can really notice a difference that's a big difference then number three you have adrenaline this here says that your team has infinite stamina during plays obviously you'll still lose um, you know, after the play is over, your guy might be dead tired. You might have to take him out. You might lose him if you're overusing your stamina during the play. But 
what the play is actually going on, you're going to have unlimited sprint, unlimited uh, jukes, unlimited spins, unlimited stiff arms, trucks, all that stuff. Just think how sticky you can be and how annoying you can be if you have that. Like I said, I'm sure that you'll still lose all that adrenaline. You might be substituting a running back every single play, but if you get out in open space and you're just going crazy on the sticks, especially if you have like juke mass or jukebox or you know any number of those uh, abilities on your players, that could be super crazy and hard to stop. That's sounds like something i can't wait to make a video about that personally i want to see what that looks like in action how crazy a player could look how hard he could be to tackle if you have those abilities on and you're doing unlimited amounts of moves during a play i mean just think of tyree kill on a sweep or something like that if you got him totally juked out i mean that's just going to be crazy that sounds meta to me but like i said i'm sure there'll be a huge penalty where you'll constantly be having to substitute players if you go overboard with that Number, uh, next up we have Shook. This one here is similar to uh, Seattle's um, home field advantage, which is the play art looks like you're on acid. Uh, that one there, I played the game for two weeks. That one didn't really bother me too much. If you use the same plays enough, you don't even really need to see the pre-play the pre play art. So that one there is definitely not meta in my opinion. Uh, the next one could be though, zoned out. It says your opponent's players cannot enter the zone. So basically, if you put that on, you never have to worry about overpowered zone abilities, uh, X-Factor abilities to hurt you, uh, which I don't know if they really do that much anyway. I mean, realistically, how often um, you know, do they get activated? It's not you know, the most common. And it doesn't, as much as those things, I mean, I think abilities you know, determine outcomes more than X-Factors. But ultimately, that's one that you know could be, it's definitely interesting. The next one, high and tight. This one here just reduces, it says greatly reduces uh, your chance of fumbling. So if you feel that you're getting robbed by fumbles, you can put that on and I'm guessing you won't fumble anymore, uh, which is pretty cool. I mean, fumbles are not something you necessarily control. They just kind of happen at random a lot of times. So that's not something I, you know, that to me is not a huge one. That was probably not meta. The next one sounds pretty overpowered though. Unstoppable. Your players, once they enter the zone, they cannot be knocked out. So if you get one of your overpowered X-Factor players into the zone uh, early, he's in the zone the rest of the game. So if you have a guy that's, you know, double me or something like that, and he's catching in single coverage all game, you could work a single receiver the entire game and he could not get knocked out of the zone no matter what. I think that one right there could definitely be a meta. And then the last, last but not least is check down. Uh, this one right here to me, I played the game for two weeks. I had this happen to me. It is super annoying. Um, but I don't know if I could go as far as to say it's meta. But ultimately, it says your your opponent's quarterback has trouble seeing deeper receivers. Like I said, that happened to me, and it definitely stood out in my mind. Uh, once the receivers get past a certain point, the icons disappear. And since I'm a deep passer, I, did, I just didn't know what to do. I was like, man, I don't even. You have to almost have have the routes memorized or have the icons of the receivers memorized to pick the right receiver at that point so if you have multiple deep routes which is typically how i run my offense and one of the and the icons disappear you're at that point you might be throwing it up for grabs because you might hit the wrong icon and now it's just basically a jump ball and it's getting picked off that one right there like i said that could be meta uh depending on what you're looking at so those are all very like i say half of them look like meta possibilities and i can't wait to use them let me know which one you think is the most uh, overpowered in the comments. Uh, and let's go and let's move on because I think that, you know, that one there, like I said, I had to start off with that because that was the one that I was most excited about. But that might not be the biggest change. The biggest change is probably the strategy items. They're basically taking away the chemistry system and they're promoting a whole new system uh, where basically uh, they're going to have something called strategy items or strategy slots, which is basically you can do a couple different things with these strategy slots. If you want to just use them all on one player, you can boost the attributes to that one player. If you want to do it to an entire group on the team, like, you know, think about, you know, the same way you used to be able to just improve your entire offensive line or you be able to improve your entire, you know, all your receivers. I mean, it's the same thing, but it's just done in a slightly different way. And there's definitely some, uh, some different angles here. So you'll have so many strategy slots. I'm sure as the year goes on, You'll have uh, strategy cards that can probably act as multiple slots in one slot. I mean, there'll be all types of way that the uh, you know th th this will um, you know improve over the year. 
But without a doubt, the most important uh, aspects of the strategy slots is just supposed to make, you know, at putting attributes to your players quicker. You're no longer going to have to put a chemistry on every all 50 players, which is always super annoying. Stuff like that. I'm glad they're really doing that. I'll give I'll give EA kudos for trying to make this quicker. But they're also trying to make a quick buck. Now, it doesn't really say how you're going to be able to get these items, but it does say you'll be able to collect them in most of the same ways that you collect player items. So I'm guessing you'll be able to get it in packs because one of the reasons they're doing this is to sell packs. You'll probably be able to get it on the market, but I have a feeling that it's gonna be super expensive, especially for the rarer cards. That's something that they're talking about too, is that um, you can start off with basic ones and then you can either build them up uh, with um, training points, which is always the goal for EAs to make training points more relevant. Even in the photos they provide, you can see that the guy has 300 coins and 45,000 training points. So training points is going to be much more relevant when it comes to these things. Uh, but you can use training points to, you know, build these up the same way you build up your, your power up card players. Uh, and then you also have the ability that there's going to be sets. Now, you can do sets to basically trade in lower ones for higher ones. Think of like silvers to golds, golds to elites, uh, small elites to higher elites. The same type of, uh, you know, trade in is going to be, you know, how you basically move these cards up. I wonder if that's going to be a coin making method out the gate too, by the way, because like I said, I'm pretty sure that some of the rare ones are going to be super expensive. Uh, and it says that, you know, they're going to be, uh, they're going to be, there's going to be some special strategy items tied directly to some programs to keep things interesting. They're also going to include new strategy items throughout the year um, to basically they say flat out to to rival the current metas so if there's a certain meta they're gonna have a strategy card that basically you know it's gonna be a chess match but this is definitely a major piece to what uh, Madden 22's Mutt is going to be about is going to be these strategy cards. These strategy cards, to me, are going to be very similar to um, X-Factors. They're almost going to be, in my opinion, it looks like they're almost going to be their own X-Factor um, or like a combination of an X-Factor and a power-up. Now, you're going to have the ability to make halftime adjustments, which is something that they mentioned uh, before. Um, when I played the game, it was disabled. It was not active when I was playing uh, Mutt for, uh, during the beta. Uh, it would just kind of go to a screen, a blank screen for 30 seconds. Well, now you have the ability to change X factors at halftime. So if you have, you have to have the X factors bought. You're not gonna be able to buy a new X factor. You're gonna have to have it bought already. For, at least this is how I read it. But if you have multiple X factors, available for your players you can switch them out at halftime you only get 30 seconds to do it and you also have to remember that your opponent could be also switching his x factors so it's definitely an interesting take i like the halftime adjustment thing i think that's really cool i'm glad it's going to be included in mutt i'm glad that the home field advantage is going to be included in mutt uh, but there's definitely some really cool stuff going on there you're also going to have stats on your items so whatever players you're using will have individual stats it won't just keep track of your stats as a whole in mutt like it used to now you can go to your cards through your item binder and you can actually see um you know what individual players have done for you you know what i mean which is really cool if you're on the old consoles uh it'll just be like more basic but if you're on next gen you'll get like the in-depth um you know it'll tell you like how much time you spent behind the line of scrimmage uh all kind of stuff you know what i mean it'll be much more in depth but you'll still have the ability to look at your stats, whether you're on the old consoles or the, or the new gen consoles. Uh, and then they also have something new called Gridiron Forge. Uh, once your team is ready, you can take on Gridiron Forge. This is a set of challenges that escalate in difficulty as you progress to higher levels uh, of the Gridiron Forge. And along the way, you earn a 75 overall Golden Player Pack, a Pro Fantasy Pack, a Gridiron Pack, an 87 plus overall Nat Player of the Month, and an Elite Pack. So. I don't know if that's something that they don't really explain what uh, if Gridiron Forge is going to be available year round uh, or what that is 100%. That's just kind of one little uh, article that I read here. But, um, you know, I like the idea that you can go into something and test your team or whatever, almost treat it like a practice mode. It'll probably be pretty easy to beat if you ask me. Uh, but ultimately, um, you know, as, as long if that's something you can do right away and then it goes away, I mean, it says you will always have a place to test your team. So it says with new challenges coming every month. So I guess that's going to be the original, um, you know, rewards that you get, which sounds like pretty good rewards if you beat it. And then every couple of or coming every month, you'll have a new set of Gridiron Forge, uh, you know, challenges 
and um, you know what you get. But that's pretty cool. That that sounds like a pretty good you know uh, amount of stuff to get free just by beating a gridiron forge challenge. Which sounds like I said, in my opinion, probably pretty easy. But some major changes though. Let me know what you guys think about those changes. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video there. If you guys want to see more videos like this, as always, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. More help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.